Hi, in this slide we want to talk a little bit about what kind of special uh, sales agent we need to go crack target accounts. Um, yeah, it's a little bit about like, well, who's going to fly in and, and assassinate uh, Osama bin Laden? Well, we don't get the first 10 guys we, you know, that show up that, you know, want to be employed today. We're obviously going to send in the crack Navy SEAL people who have all kinds of special training, etc. So, who is a special force uh, uh, 007 kind of uh, creature that would go out and crack these accounts? Uh, some capabilities that this, this ideal agent would have would be that they could dome sell, uh, you know, an account. When you look at a very large account and how our products might flow to and through them, and the people that are involved in logistical uh, pathways and paperwork and so forth, uh, there really are a number of people. So ideally, uh, you know, the, certainly the service value chain, you know, uh, vice president can go in and sort of say, I want to do an audit. It's easy to do those with existing accounts. It's not so easy to sort of do it piecemeal uh, and maybe even a little bit uh, uh, stealthily uh, when you don't have easy access to an account. But the idea is we want to try to piece together the whole picture of what's going on there and who all the players are and what their little pain points and frustrations are and see if we can't turn them into our friends or buddies or spies or sponsors and so forth. Uh, to the end, where we're, we're going to try to create a sustainable win-win system solution that's going to go to and through the place and and uh, and tune everybody's uh, effectiveness. Uh, earlier, we talked about uh, a, a, on a scale from one to ten, a, a, a rep would be a ten. Well, first of all, we have to sort of define what a ten would be, and uh, I've got a slide if, because I put it in red. I'm going to come back and visit these terms in, in, in depth in a future clip. Uh, but this would allow, this would be somebody who actually was universally, uh, you know, uh, good at communicating with people at all levels and stations and vocabulary. They would have a high social emotional IQ so that they can listen to the intellectual content, but also see the emotions and, and, and pick up on peripheral uh, issues, you know, that, that, because, you know, people aren't, you know, just rational creatures in a, in a machine. They, they have their emotional, political, uh, you know, uh, kinds of issues. And, and so you need somebody that can tune in all of that. Um, he, capable of corporate espionage and diplomacy. Uh, I remember when I was cracking uh, Caterpillar Tractor Company back in Peoria, Illinois in the mid-70s, uh, I was going after their copy paper business. And I went over and spent 18 hours over a couple of evenings going through all the Peoria Journal Star, the local newspapers, articles on Caterpillar. And then I you know, read a wonderful article about their central receiving where they had all these United Auto Worker people on lift trucks, you know, running around sort of getting office supplies and business forms and getting them out to 35 different locations in the Peoria area. So then I went to my company and I said, who knows somebody who works at Caterpillar? And since one third of all the people work in Fiore worked at Caterpillar, everybody had a, a relative that worked there. So I was able to get in and get a tour of the central receiving area um, over to a copy center in building, six, building 16 and sort of put together on the back of a napkin kind of what was the internal replenishment process just to get copy paper at a, at a remote location. Uh, so this was this, you know, this I was doing this all, you know, on the on the on the sly because when I actually went in to see the big buyer who had been doing this for 27 years and had very cozy relationships with his his veteran salespeople, um, uh, you know, and I start talking about you know, these issues, I had to do it in a diplomatic way. It's like, well, hey, Junior, where did you get that information? Oh, out of this article in the Peoria Journal Star and so forth. So I, I had to to be able to uh, move the conversation along, but not, a, not in, in a credible, but not threatening kind of way. Um, the... The, our hero, our champion, our 007 agent is going to be a bit of an entrepreneur. Uh, in a sense, we are blazing a new trail where whenever you're prospecting or trying to break open new business, you're not going in and inheriting something and just fine-tuning what is and being a good custodian or something. You've actually got to go in and 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 create a, a new solution to, and sort of you have to jump, leapfrog whoever 
is in the incumbency. Whoever enjoys the business, you have to take it to the next level. Um, so that's that's why we need to have this ability to sort of anticipate, see the future, see the bigger context, and so forth, and then figure out how to fill that. Um, obviously, this is going to take a lot of time and energy, and it's very hard to be a monomaniac in a mission when you have uh, 85 accounts that you're supposed to call on a on a on a on a, on a bread man, Doritos chip, stock it, fluff up the shelf, etc. kind of basis. A lot of salespeople um, have fallen into the trap of of having too many customers uh, for which they're they're trying to stay on top of, so they don't really have a lot of extra free proactive creative time to hyper focus uh, on the one percent of the customers that are going to give us uh, fifty percent of our profit growth in the next five years and number six because uh, our agent 007 does the first five things what happens is they set themselves apart from the rest of the field and and customers appreciate uh, what they're doing and how they're working and their their good intents for uh, for the different people on the buy side. And, and normally, what happens is people will say on the buy side, they'll say, "Well, you know, I understand what you're saying, and that's great, and we really need to do that." But unfortunately, I'm compromised right now. I'm preoccupied. I, I've got a gun to my head about another issue, and our agent would say, "Oh, really? Well, what's that?" And they say, oh, well, and they would confide whatever the issue or problem is. And maybe there's a way of helping to ameliorate that, uh, solve it, you know, at the very least, develop more goodwill brownie points to have a better ongoing cooperative relationship with that person. But as a general rule, we get in and we, we, we have a certain goal and we're sort of pursuing that. And, and out of that come unexpected opportunities but because we're in there we see it and we have credibility with everybody else we're able to take seize that opportunity even though that's not the original one we we went after and that's the story of business most people will tell you that started up successful companies when we started up we we really wound up succeeding for many of the wrong reasons the wrong way i mean give us credit for you know starting up the company and 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 being in the right space but but how things actually broke and how we had to sort of adjust and boogie and why we succeeded were not, be, you just couldn't foresee them, but we were able to make it happen. So they have that kind of uh, uh, improvisational uh, flexibility uh, to, to, to go with the flow that they start to create and, and jump on, 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 on new openings that happen to pop up that weren't foreseen. So those are some um, ideas of, of, of what kind of person we need to go out and crack these accounts. It's not, it's not really for just anybody. Thank you.